Hello, everyone. My name is Manolis Finarolakis, the Community Manager of Patch of Land, and welcome to our monthly webinar series for real estate crowdfunding. And on this episode, we are going to reveal our new offering structure that protects our investors uh, even more so than they were protected in the past through our legal department. Uh, we have a great show today, and we're going to go over a lot of different elements of real estate crowdfunding. Uh, but before we actually begin the introductions, I just want to let everyone know that you can actually submit any questions live at any point during this show. Uh, if you're watching through the Google Hangout on air, you can submit your questions there. You can also submit uh, your questions on our website, and one of our people on our team will definitely get back to you and answer those questions. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to actually first introduce uh, the general counsel of Patch of Land, Amy Wan, and she's going to introduce herself uh, briefly to the audience so that we can uh, we, we can see the master behind the legal structure. So Amy, uh, please say hello to the audience. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy. I'm general counsel over here at Patch of Land. We are very excited for this webinar today. Um, just a little bit about me. Uh, you know, I... Uh, uh, I basically came from government on the uh, regulatory affairs side of things, um, had a career there doing uh, international regulatory affairs, and uh, have done also a few things in legal tech uh, out here in LA. I'm the uh, founder and organizer of the LA Legal Hacker Meetup, uh, which focuses on law and technology and making uh, access to justice and the practice of law uh, much easier using technology and, uh, uh, you know, happy to take any questions. Excellent. Amy, um, it, it's it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, as, as much as we love Doug, it's nice to change it up once in a while. So thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. Uh, so uh, what, what you were nice enough to do for the audience was you pre-recorded this amazing instructional and informational video uh, that included graphics on exactly how this new offering structure works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and we'll first watch the instructional video and then we'll go ahead and we'll answer a few pre-submitted questions as well as answer any live questions that the audience may have as they watch this webinar. So without further ado, I will actually share my screen and we will play the uh, video that you so graciously created. Thank you, Manolis. Now, before we get started on explaining our new offering structure, uh, we'd might like to make a general disclaimer very quickly that the information contained here is provided only for educational and informational purposes and should not be construed as legal advice or as an offer to perform legal services. This does not form an attorney-client relationship and investors should always consult their financial and legal advisors prior to making any investment. So before we get into how the new offering structure works, we wanted to quickly review how a borrower payment dependent note works. Most real estate crowdfunding platforms use a borrower payment dependent note structure for their debt deals, but equity does have a different structure, so investors should keep that in mind. Uh, this borrower payment dependent note structure is very similar to the way Lending Club and Prosper's uh, structure also works. So very briefly, uh, Patch of Land or any originator will make a loan to an underlying borrower. Um, those loan documents tend to include a mortgage or a deed of trust or other security interest in instrument. It'll include a note and also several other documents that go along with the deal. Now associated with that note is the borrower payment dependent note that is issued to investors. Any investor that purchases a borrower payment dependent note lends not to the borrower itself, but to an intermediary entity. Um, it could be Patch of Land, it could be an SPV, or any other uh, portal that you might be doing business with. And that intermediary entity also owns the underlying borrower note. It's essentially a note on top of a note. So the borrower payment dependent note sits on top of the underlying borrower note. There are a number of reasons why we use an intermediary entity, but basically the entire borrower payment dependent note um, just means that investors get paid if and when the intermediary uh, gets paid by the real estate developer. 
Now, Padgett Land Crowd funds high volumes of these notes. So for each underlying borrower loan, it issues at least one or more borrower payment dependent notes that correspond with the underlying borrower note. It just depends on how many investors it takes to fill a particular deal. Investors should remember that their borrower payment dependent note is tied only to the payments made on their specific underlying borrower loan and that they are not entitled to any payments received under any other borrower loan. Before I explain the new offering structure, it may make more sense to lay out the context of this discussion by explaining our previous offering structure, which was very, very simple. Essentially, we had Patch of Land Inc., uh, the entity, and it made all the loans to the underlying borrowers, and so thus owned all of those notes. And then it also issued to investors the borrower payment dependent notes. So everything was done under one entity. There were two issues with this uh, very rudimentary uh, offering structure. Number one, while the loan to the intermediate ent entity is fully secured by a mortgage on the underlying property, the investor note and the borrower payment dependent note received by the investor was completely unsecured. Some could argue that it was directly, uh, indirectly secured, but for all intents and purposes, it would have been regarded legally as unsecured. Now, secondly, there's also no formal backup plan for what would happen if Patch of Land one day had to shutter its windows. So we've spent a lot of time and resources over the past year in researching and basically coming up with this, uh, what we think is a very efficient, scalable, and user-friendly structure that resolved these two issues. So, Here's how the new offering structure basically works. First, the borrower and investor notes are no longer held by Patch of Land uh, directly, but are instead held by an SPV or SPE. Um, the two terms are interchangeable, but they basically stand for special purpose entity or special purpose vehicle. That is a subsidiary of Patch of Land Incorporated, the parent company. We've designed the SPV to be bankruptcy remote, and as long as all corporate formalities are followed, they're designed to be bankruptcy remote in some sort of scenario where a patch of land uh, is no longer operating or declares bankruptcy or dissolves for any reason. Uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, SPVs or bankruptcy remote companies, it's basically a company within a corporate group where uh, the bankruptcy is designed to have as little economic impact as possible on the other entities within the group. Now, secondly, we've also signed an indenture trustee agreement with the bank. What this means is that if something should happen ever to patch of land, the indenture trustee has the authority to basically step it. They would, um, in the event of something happening, uh, whether that be a bankruptcy, a dissolution, or anything along those lines, the trustee would basically step in and facilitate the making of payments on the investor notes to investors. So it would pass all collected proceeds directly to the holders of the investor notes, and it would be responsible for enforcing the patch of land note and securing uh, the mortgage upon any default by the borrower. So these first two features, the bankruptcy remote design and the indenture trustee, basically answer the question of what happens if Patch of Land or its subsidiary are no longer around. The next few features address the security issue of investors. Now, for the security issue first, we have granted a security interest to investors. So remember, the holder of the underlying borrower note, in this case the SPV, is secured by a first lien position on the underlying property. For each borrower payment dependent note that is sold with respect to the underlying borrower loan, the SPV assigns all of its interest in the patch of land note and securing mortgage to an independent third party indenture trustee. The trustee is tasked with holding the interest in the patch of land note and securing mortgage strictly for the benefit of the holders of the investor notes. Now, in order to perfect that security grant, we've taken two additional steps. 
First, uh, possession via a custodian. We have a custodial arrangement with the trustee where the trustee holds all the originals of the underlying borrower loan documents for the benefit of investors. So while the SPV owns the underlying borrower note, the custodian, this uh, indentured trustee, uh, the bank, has actual physical possession of the original borrower documents. The second part of this is in order, again, to perfect the security interest and put third parties on notice, we filed a UCC that puts any potential third party creditors on notice that the underlying borrower loans have been pledged to the trustee for the benefit of investors. All of this is basically to say that while the mechanism is indirect and complex, the result is fairly simple. Investors with a borrower payment dependent note from the SPV are directly secured by a shared interest with other investors in the first lien position of the underlying property. Keep in mind that investors cannot go after borrowers directly like a traditional lender can it's because the trustee acts on behalf of all investors in overseeing and enforcing their security interests. We'd like to thank all the council, investors, and other parties who brought up these concerns and have uh, remained patient and willing to give us feedback through this process. To keep the juices flowing, we've created a Patch of Land Ideas portal page to get a sense of what uh, our borrowers and investors want. And you can basically access that directly at patchofland.com forward slash ideas. I hope that's clarified our new structure. And we have a little time for Q&A. So Manolis, back to you. All right, that was uh, that was an excellent description and, uh, and an excellent narration of the new offering structure. So Amy, uh, again, thank you so much for putting that together for us. Sure, sure. So, um, so we did, as I mentioned, we did have a few uh, pre-submitted questions uh, that we'll go through now. Uh, but again, I encourage anyone watching on Google to submit some more questions live, or if you're watching from the Patchland blog page, feel free to post some comments as well, and we'll and we'll get to those too. So the first question that I noticed, uh, Amy, uh, that uh, that came in, there was a question about the um, the borrower note, the underlying borrower note that is the first lien security on the property. Uh, someone had a question that said, can there be multiple multiple borrower dependent notes on the underlying borrower note? Uh, to kind of account for the investors in the deal. Yes, yeah, yeah. so basically um, we issue as many borrow payment dependent notes as it takes uh, to fill up the deal. So for example, if we have a $100,000 uh, opportunity, if one person takes out all $100,000, then we're only gonna issue one borrow payment dependent note. Now if 50 people are in that deal and then then it gets to hundred thousand dollars. Then we'll be issuing fifty borrow payment dependent notes. Very interesting. Okay, so so it's pro rata based on the amount of investment that the investor has has put in there. Yes. Excellent. Uh, conversely, uh, the the question arose: Is there any instances where there's more than one original borrower note, or is there always one borrower note? So there is one state in particular on the East Coast where um, sometimes there are two borrower notes. Uh, both of them are going to be with patch of land and you'll see these projects on the website. They're categorized as phase one, phase two projects. And that's just because of the uh, real estate lending regulations uh, in that particular state. But otherwise there should always be only one borrower, underlying borrower loan um, if you were talking about, you know, maybe second lien positions or anything like that, uh, in our loan documents, we, it actually states that, uh, you know, borrowers are prohibited from getting other loans, other mortgages, whether superior or inferior to our loan, um, unless they actually get our approval. So investors, uh, should feel relatively comfortable that there isn't going to be a surprise uh, second lien position um, uh, creditor coming out of nowhere. Excellent. You you read my mind. I was just going to say, what's what's to stop the original borrower from getting a second lien? So you you know you you, you beat me to it, Amy. 
<laughs> um, excellent. So now let's switch to the actual um, the part of the new element of this, which is the indentured trustee. So there's a, there's a number of questions here. Uh, to clarify, the indentured trustee would only need to step in if there was some sort of event where patch of land uh, defaulted in some way. Is that is that correct? Is that the only time an indentured trustee is relevant? Um, yes. Yeah. So basically, the way it's defined in the indenture agreement, um, it's defined as an event of default, right? And then it lays out all the different events of default. So uh, that could be anything from declaring bankruptcy, from patch of land not existing anymore. Um, there's actually uh, one provision um, that doesn't account for patch of land uh, not doing well. And that would be, for example, if patch of land were to collect borrower payments, but then not make those distributions to investors, that also constitutes an event of default. Got you. Okay. So so for, for the investors out there, uh, this this next piece of our discussion is really what, what protects you in, in the case of those events that Amy just mentioned. So one of the questions as well that came in was, so we, we know that the indenture, uh, the indenture trustee uh, is is responsible for facilitating the payments, so they would they would take the place of patch of land. Uh, but are they also responsible for um, liquidation if, if that was an event that needed to happen, or uh, management of the properties if the borrower also defaulted? Uh, are, are they also responsible for basically the the whole enchilada, so to speak? Yes. So basically, the part that they're not actually responsible is for the servicing of the underlying loan that we have a third party vendor for and it doesn't matter if patch of land is around or if the indenture trustee has taken over that bit is always going to just keep on going um where the indenture trustee steps in is really uh when it comes to investor distributions you know so uh that third party loan serv servicer they're going to collect the interest payments and pay them to patch of land now if patch of land isn't around anymore well then what happens to the interest interest distributions we don't want it to just go to any third-party creditors of the company and so um, the indenture trustee would step in in that scenario they're going to make the interest distributions they're going to handle or, or make the calls on well what happens if we need a workout or a restructuring of a loan and if and if they they are legally obligated to do that, if they decide that they don't want to be in the workouts business, they can always um, outsource it to another third party. But at the end of the day, that is their duty. Excellent. And so and so, really, one of the most exciting pieces of this, which which also is uh, par partially the responsibility of the custodian, is that as you mentioned in, in the video, it, it said the old the old. Uh, way of, of doing the offering structures if, if you went down to the details it was a it was an unsecured interest but what's happening now with with the new offering structure is that there is a secured interest that is actually granted to each investor based on their pro rata share of the loan funding that they contributed so uh can you share more about that like this is pretty this is a pretty big deal it's essentially um how is their security uh, granted? How is that made secure for them? So if you actually look at the um, borrower payment dependent note, that should be the first document set of the entire investor document set. Um, page one is all the material terms and page two is where you start seeing a lot of text. Um, I le believe it's in the second paragraph of page two. Um, uh, it should be section two of that second paragraph where it actually makes a security interest grant to the investor. Now, um, so, so now the investor actually has a document that makes that security interest grant. There, there are different levels of securitization. Um, you know, uh, people react differently to how much they want to actually perfect it. And so what we've, done is actually taken that as far as uh, we could. So uh, we filed a, a blanket UCC on it to put third party creditors on notice. Um, we, uh, we went ahead and under the UCC, I believe it's Article 9, 
um, what wins out at the end of the day is actual physical possession. So who possesses, you know, the, the physical copy of the original borrower loan docs? Um, we're giving that physical possession to a custodian who also happens to be the indenture trustee. It's just a, a different agreement that they're operating under. And so they hang on and have physical possession of those documents. Wonderful. So that is the, that is a major accomplishment and uh, and and something that uh, should make investors you know feel feel pretty confident in their in their interest. Uh, and and similarly, then uh, as I mentioned, then uh, it is recorded by the custodian based on their uh, pro rata interest. Um, one other uh, one other question that came through is now that this new legal structure is in place. Uh, what happens to the old loans that were issued before uh, July 1st, which is when this new announcement uh, became effective? What is happening to uh, the old loans uh, as far as the, the prior investors are concerned? Right. So we've actually had a lot of investor feedback on this point pretty much uh, even, even before we launched the new offering structure. Um, when we were hinting that we were launching the new offering structure, we had a lot of investors call in and say, what's going to happen to uh, my, my existing investments? Um, so what we're actually in the process of doing right now, and I, I can literally see uh, one of our staff members out of my window right now uh, accomplishing this. But basically, we're taking all the, um, the original loan docs for the old, uh, uh, sorry, we're taking all the original uh, underlying borrower loan docs of the old investment opportunities and selling those to the SPV so that they will be owned by the SPV. And then we're assigning um, all our interest in the uh, in the in investor uh, borrower payment dependent notes also to the SPV. So essentially they will still benefit from the bankruptcy remote uh, indenture trustee part of our new offering structure. Great. So, so that's the, that's great then. So the old so the old investors are not being left behind, which is a great thing. Um, and and one one great thing that you did ahead of time, and I'll, I'll mention this website again towards the end. But if if investors wanted to see sample documents, uh, all you'd have to do is go to patchofland.com backslash legal. Uh, that's patchofland.com backslash legal. Fill out the information, and you can actually see the sample. Uh, new offering structure, so you can feel confident uh, prior to investing uh, with with Patch of Land by seeing those sample documents. Um, another question that came through is is kind of thinking from a bigger picture, kind of like a, a worst case scenario. Like under what scenario would would investors be at risk, uh, whereby perhaps the indentured trustee. Uh, did not fulfill their obligations. Like, is there any scenario where investors might not get paid uh, if something goes wrong? Um, so, if I if I understand your question correctly, you're asking under what scenarios would investors, despite this new offering structure, still be left in the lurch? Um, uh, it's hard to brainstorm or pre predict that sort of scenario. I, I suppose if the uh, indenture trustee for some reason also dissolved or uh, went bankrupt or ceased to operate, um, that would affect investors. Uh, the bank that we chose has actually been around for, I think, a century, 90 or 100 years or something like that. So I think that's pretty unlikely. Um, I, you know, I, I can't really think of any other scenario at the moment. There is always the possibility, and, and I can't discount this, there is always the possibility that the indenture trustee may willfully or neg negligently um, uh, discharge their duties. Uh, hopefully, they don't. They are are legally contractually obligated uh, to perform their duties, but that is always the possibility. Very good. Okay. Um, and so, an, another interesting piece here is the uh, is is talking about um, the, the new regulations that that are coming through and and how this might affect that. 
uh, or, or what the plans for patch of land in general are. Uh, what, what many investors have, have noticed recently was the, the recent passage of a new crowdfunding law known as Regulation A+, which is opening the door for unaccredited investors to potentially uh, enjoy the benefits of investing in these lucrative securities. Uh, does Patch of Land does Patch of Land have any um, interest in going into or any plans in going into the Regulation A plus route, where uh, instead of only right now accredited investors being able to invest, will they go into the unaccredited realm? And maybe the question also becomes maybe give us a general understanding of how Patch of Land does what they do currently, and then what, what we're talking about here in Regulation A. So Reg A Plus is definitely a very new, innovative, very exciting regulation. I believe June 19th was the first day to file or test the waters. And I know um, note a lot of crowdfunding and securities attorneys have been swamped recently with the flood of uh, borrowers coming through their doors asking to file one of these. Uh, we did do a lot of research and uh, consultations into Reg A+. Plus. Um, we decided that uh, for the time being we will not be filing a Reg A+, plus, um, or utilizing it um, just because the way our particular business model works, it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, comport very well to operating under that regulation. That's not to say we'll never do it. Uh, there's always the possibility uh, if some if some other uh, portal that specializes in real estate comes out with a very uh, particularly innovative way to uh, work Reg A plus. Um, you know, I'll, I'll never say that we'll never do it, but for the time being, that's not really in our plans. Um, currently, we operate under 506C, and you're right, that does limit uh, our investors, our investor base to accredited investors only, um, and, and we do have to take reasonable steps to verify that accreditation process, as all our current investors know. Um, but uh, in the interim, that seems to be the model that's working best for us. Now, I know Patch of Land, uh, you know, the, the very reason I joined this company, and I, I remember even saying this in my interview with the founders when I was interviewing for the job, I love the fact that Patch of Land's mission is um, to, to grow communities, to, to build wealth. Um, I love the idea of democratizing investment opportunity. Um, we're still waiting on a proper mechanism to do that. And we're still actively searching and researching. Um, we haven't found a solution yet as of today, but you know we're we're still working on it. Absolutely, and and the and the solution, you know, the the solution, you know, you, you, there's two solutions to to kind of look into there. You know, one of course is the investors being able to invest in in high quality uh, real estate loans. Uh, the other is also uh, on the borrower side of the equation. And so um, there was one question, but I also want to preface this question about kind of how to get started with a patch of land with uh, something that you and I uh, conversed with over email recently. One of the needs that we find is there's a lot of borrowers out there uh, or real estate developers who'd like to get started, but they don't have a lot of experience. Um, but there was someone who approached us recently that showed us an innovative legal structure uh, that could be headed by a lead investor. So, I mean, not only do we want the unaccredited investors to build wealth by investing in deals, but we want the, the early stage real estate developers who need loans uh, to essentially partner up with more experienced developers who can guarantee that loan. Um, so there, there's a lot of things on the horizon that I think can, can come of uh, these innovative new models in, in legal. Um, but let me share the, the question here first. So there was an individual who said um, it, if he were to begin the process of doing a deal with Patch of Land, um, what advice would you give him from the legal perspective? Because of course, when you apply uh, through the patchofland.com website, uh, there is a massive, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say massive, but a, a decent amount of due diligence that has to be done in order to have Patch of Land feel comfortable pre-funding the deal. So what would be your advice uh, for someone who's looking to submit their first deal through Patch of Land as a borrower? 
Well, first of all, uh, I would say make sure you've got some experience under your belt. Um, I think our qualification is, you know, five successful rehabs or at least three years of experience. And if you don't have that under your belt, I would uh, highly suggest that you, uh, you, you, you go get it or, you know, you can call our originations team at any time and they're happy to assist you in, in helping you get that sort of experience. Um, from a legal standpoint, though, uh, I think the number one holdup uh, when it comes to closings is uh, the borrower doc set. So um, if you can get all your legal docs in order, and that is um, your, your entity formation docs, so uh, your articles of incorporation, making sure you've got your operating agreement, making sure you have uh, scanned PDF copies of these as opposed to original copies, um, that's going to make the entire process a lot easier. Just, just making sure that you, uh, you have all your documents ready to go. We can close the loan as soon as we have all your due diligence docs and it goes through underwriting, but the, the number one biggest uh, delay on closings is document chasing. And so if borrowers can help us out with that, everything goes a lot faster. Excellent, um, and, and you're absolutely right on that. The the more organized the borrow is, the better. Uh, and, and this is a question that just came to my head just now. Uh, does does patch of land? Uh, and I know it's kind of a different uh, a different model, but does patch of land? Can, can they speak with the borrower before they actually close on a property and kind of give a pre approval letter? Is that something that patch of land does for certain borrowers in case you know they need that to actually put a property under contract? Yeah, sure. That is, uh, that's definitely a service we offer. Excellent. Uh, yeah, didn't mean to throw that out of left field. I just <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> uh, great. Well, um, right now I'm, I'm just going to take a quick check. I don't see any other questions at the moment. Um, so uh, I, I thought this was extremely helpful uh, to, to the viewers. We have a, a good amount of viewers here. Um, again, you know, if, you, if you'd like to know more and see the sample of the actual legal docs, please go to patchaland.com slash legal. That's patchaland.com slash legal. Gives you a nice bulleted list of all the new protections, as well as your ability to contact us and get sample documents. Uh, but before we close, uh, Amy, any, any, uh, any last words you'd like to share with the audience before we close out for the night? I would just say that we are always um, ready and uh, willing to listen to our investors and we want to hear from them and find out uh, what we can be doing better, whether that is something in the legal documents or whether that's something on the customer service side um, or even uh, additional product types that they want to see or additional states that they want to see loan opportunities in. We're always here to listen to our investors. It's a, it's a very core um, and important uh, part of our company to be very accessible. And so please you know, let us know your comments, let us know your suggestions. Go ahead and submit ideas to the Patch of Land Ideas portal. And uh, don't, don't be uh, afraid to reach out. Excellent. Well, Amy, it was, it was a pleasure to have you on. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that was Amy Wan, the general counsel of Patch of Land. Uh, thank you so much again for watching our, our program, and we hope to see you next month on our next uh, real estate crowdfunding webinar. Have a wonderful evening, and good night. Great. Thank you.